like to say good morning Facebook, Pastor John Jeter, North River Bible Baptist. I want to welcome you again into our services as we continue to praise and lift up the name of Jesus this new year of 2021. This is the last day of the month in January, January 31st. Usually this is a fifth Sunday and we usually have Family and Friends Day. But I do know because of the corona, a lot of people are not going to church. A lot of people are either sitting at home or either watching by Facebook. For those of you that are watching by Facebook, I want to encourage you to continue to trust the Lord and continue to listen to his word. Uh, you can pray. You can read your Bible. And you can, uh, again, do Bible studies. We do Bible study on Wednesday. We've been teaching on the book of Hebrews, a uh, faith chapter. And we've been talking about the, the biblical characters and how they exercise faith. So this morning we want to continue to talk a little bit about how we've been talking about how to have success in 2021. I do want to give a shout out to uh, Brother Wayne Roland for last Sunday. Uh, he preached on unity and so solidarity. And it was a blessing. He talked about how we need to come together as not just a black community, but as people of God, people of faith for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Y'all a little weak on this morning. Amen? Amen? I would like to say that Again, I hope you don't get offensive to me preaching, but uh, I don't have a problem with tolerance, and I don't have a problem with diversity, and I don't have a problem with inclusion. The only problem I have with it is when we bring sin in, and we try to say that's including that's diversity. That's not true. God is all for all people, but when you get against the word of God, when you go sin against God, then I don't care what color you are, Amen. it's wrong. Amen, Amen somebody. Now, I know y'all, and Brother Wayne hit it on last week, and I know y'all get all upset because, you know, people are often the Republicans and the Democrats and the Independents. It really doesn't matter. Amen. If if the party is against God, let me preach a little bit, I'm against it. Amen? Amen. It needs to do things to bring honor and glory to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. Next week, we'll be celebrating six years as a church. Uh, we founded this church in 2015. Again, I've been in Minister over 30 years, but again, we want to thank the Lord for what he did, so next week, we want to invite you out to come, we're going to be having a uh, dinner time, a brunch time, so we're looking forward to it, so again, we want to invite you out next week. This morning, we're going to still build on how to be successful and prosper and spirit-filled in 2021. I, I want to get this clear, and I've been preaching on it, but maybe you didn't get it. The prosperity of the gospel is not in the Bible. God don't want everybody Amen. to be wealthy and healthy Amen. and all. That's not true. But now God does want us to prosper as our soul prosper. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so now God don't want me to be down in the dumps and can't pay my bills and, 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 and declare bankrupt. No, God don't want that. But at the same time, let's not get caught up in that. God wants everybody to be wealthy. Amen, somebody. Amen. By the way, if you look at the Hollywood and you look at the star, you'll find out that they got a lot of problems because the money is not the answer. Matter of fact, the Bible says, hey, let's get it right. The love of money. Yes. What? The root of all money. So, so when you get caught up in the trying to make a king and trying to get on in and trying to make more money, trying to do that, you'll find out that it'll take you away from the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. I did read this on Facebook. Most of y'all read it. But January the 21st, which was 10 days ago, was the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century. <laughs> That's amazing. So now we're 10 days after that. And uh, Revelation talked about in 21 that it's going to be, again, 12 pearly gates. Revelation 21, 12 pearly gates. It's going to be a street of gold. We're going to talk about it's going to be the foundation that built on the apostles. The wall had 12 foundations built on the names of the apostles. I know what you're saying, Jesus. You say, well, you know, all that stuff about heaven and it's not real. And Let me just tell you. I believe in a real heaven. I believe in a real city. I believe in a real streets of gold. Amen, somebody. Amen. I believe there's going to be a day when we're going to be in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. The primary fact that we want to talk about is trusting God. We're going to get into that, what that means. His adjudication. I, I look at the word adjudication, and it has to do with the legal process. It has to do with an arbitrator or a judge that reviews the evidence, and he comes up with Again, the solution to the problem. There's a problem. Man cannot approach a holy God. Man has a sin problem, so God had to adjudicate, come up with a solution that we can go back and be in the presence of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. 
but we're going to preach it on that today. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to a classic scripture today, Proverbs chapter 3. So I want you to grab your Bibles. I don't, like I said, I don't care if you have a notebook, tablet, phone, whatever you have. Grab your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Now again, I told you before, we use the King James Version. Everybody said, why? Because I believe that the King James is the closest of the translation that came from the text receptacle of the Word of God when you take the Hebrew and the Greek and you translate. Amen, somebody. Amen. And there's some words that are transliterated because they couldn't find a good word like baptizo. Baptizo was a word that was translated because they couldn't find a word in the, in the Greek that meaning to go under. So those words are transliterated. But we have what I believe the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. Yes, when you get that, say amen. amen. We're going to read from verse 1 through 10. I'll read 1, you read 2, till we get to 10. Then I give you my text. Then I pray, and then we get into the word of God. Amen? Amen. By the way, I always like to do this because I'm a Bible teacher. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. So mm -hmm. when you study the Bible, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. You'll find out that God used men to write the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Solomon, believe it or not, was the wisest man ever lived, mm -hmm. yet he failed in his own wisdom. Amen, somebody. Amen. But he wrote this book, yes. and he wrote to his son. Reverend was his son. He would write some things. And Proverbs is a good book because it has a lot of controversy on the things you should do and the things you should do. So we believe he wrote this in the time when he was really using the wisdom of God. Now later on, he wrote Ecclesiastes in his old age and he found out that he got away from God. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my command. Verse 2. For live the days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall I find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. And when we're talking about finding favor with God, trust in the Lord, that's that key verb we always hear, with all thine heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. We're yes. talking about reverential fear. And depart from evil. Yes. Right. It, it shall be help to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. And when getting this help, your bones and your marrow is very important. So we're talking about following the word of God. He's going to keep you healthy. Amen, somebody. Amen. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Verse 10 together. So, so shall thy arm be filled with men, and thy and precious, precious shall burst out with new wine. How to find favor with God and fill your barns with plenty. I don't know about you, but the farmer wants his barns filled. Amen? All the time, yes, sir. So we're going to talk to you today in 2021 how to find favor with God. And fill your barns with plenty. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord's Day. A day that you have made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the saints of God that came out to the house of God. Thank you for those that are listening by Facebook, Lord. I pray that our words, like I said, that the words of my mouth and the meditation, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, we want to lift up Jerry. Hell, family, first of all, Lord, another death in this family, Lord. It's sad, but we know that life comes and death comes, so we pray that you will comfort the family, Lord. Our prayers and our condolences go out to his sister, Lord, and his family as they will begin to make uh, steps to finalize their love. Lord. Mm -hmm. Pray for those others, Lord, that have fat funerals. I know most people know, but our president of the Urban League, Brother Warren Logan, went to be with the Lord. So for lifting up that family, Lord, and some of the others that have lost loved ones, uh, I know we have buried some loved ones, and we'll be going to a funeral tomorrow. So Lord, we lift them up. Lift up again the whole world as we have been affected with this plague, this corona, this COVID-19. Thank you for the vaccine that's coming out, Lord. And people have already got the first and second. And again, let me just say from the get-go, it's not the mark of the beast. Don't have what people saying any type of code in it that will keep uh, that people can trace. So, Lord, just help us to, to be the type of people that will follow signs and, and, and 
doctors and, 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 and the labs and stuff like that. Pray for the first line responders, the nurses, the doctors, the police, the firemen, the medics. Pray for the truck drivers. Pray for the ones that are helping us with our food, the ones that are helping us with our service station. Praying for the ones that are uh, handling stuff with their hands. Pray now, Lord, that you would touch the families that have been touched by corona, those that have lost loved ones, and those that may be still in the hospital, Lord, on ventilators. Uh, those are still uh, quarantined, Lord. I know our family has been touched by it, Lord. We didn't have any death, but we do lift up the families that have, Lord. Praying again, Lord, for our schools, Lord. That's that's real burden in my heart, Lord, as our students have not been able to, to get the education and the teaching, and they've been on hybrid, Lord. They've been on virtual. Lord, so I'm praying. I understand some of the schools opening back up starting tomorrow. Lord, so I praise you, Lord. I thank you for that. Praying that we would still take precautions, that kids would wear face masks, and they would still do sterilization. And I think you're going to do it on Wednesday. And they will, again, uh, sanitize the schools, Lord. So we're just praying, Lord, you will work all that out for your honey, Lord. Praying for our church members, Lord. I think about Sister Russell, Lord, some of the others that cannot be here. I think about Brother Jenny, some of the others that. Can I be here for whatever reason, Lord? Praying that you will comfort him. Praying for the Malone family, Lord. All those praying. And you know, all the things that we have to go through. Now, Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins. I pray that you help me to remember, rightly divide the word of truth. Hide me behind the cross. Use me for a little while just to preach and teach the honor of the word of God. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor and the praise. For the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I define faith, Lord. God. Well, a little review. I just want to share with you that we live in two worlds. A lot of people don't understand. There's a spiritual world yes. mm -hmm. and there's a secular world. Yes. Now, you, you might not understand this, but there are angels that you cannot see. That's right. That God has, again, taken control of the world. Amen, somebody. Amen. I think I preached to you about Elisha, servant, was down in Dothan and that a Syrian army came down and he couldn't see. Y'all remember the story? Mm -hmm. And he said, Elisha, what we gonna do? He said, oh, you got to worry about that. That more with us than with them. That's right. And he couldn't see. God, and he said, I, 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 I beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. let, let me just put it on our work. That's what we be. What we gonna do? We gonna trust God. Amen. And he prayed and said, Lord, would you open his eyes? Lord, open his eyes that he can see. And God is in control. And God opened his eyes and he yes. looked out. Yes. And he saw around the whole city of Dothan, and the mountains, chariots of fire Amen. and horses of fire. And he said, oh, God is going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Let me just preach a little bit. For those of y'all that are already getting discouraged, always getting stressed out, look to the spiritual world. Amen. God is still on the throne. Mm. God is still in control. Well, how am I going to pay my bills, preacher? Like you always have. God still, he know you got to eat. I think I preached a little bit about on the sparrow, did I not? Amen. If God can take care of the sparrow, what? Amen. He sure take care of you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. We look at trials as traps. But God looks at trials as training. Did y'all get that? Yeah. When we go through a trial, we think, oh, I'm in trap. No, God looks at it as a boot camp. Let me preach a little bit about the military training ground. Going to the boot camp, God is trying to train you for the next level in your life. By the way, it's just like lifting weight. You have to start with the five pound, then you go to ten pound. Then so you you go through trial to get strong. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Like the old folks say, if you've never been sick, you wouldn't know what it is to be here. Amen. If you've never been down in the dump, you would know what it is to be joyful. Amen, somebody. Amen. I want to take you all the way back to the beginning. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. Now, I, I just want to show y'all something so, so, so y'all will understand. In the beginning, God, Elohim, God the Father, saw, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, created the heavens and the earth. Y'all with me? Amen. And every day, God created something. And every day, He created something. God said it was good. Amen, hey, somebody. Amen. And then God created the crown of his creation. Mankind. Adam and Eve. Yeah, Amen. Amen. And God changed it. He put up ever. He said, everything is very good. Amen, somebody. Amen. Y'all may preach a little bit. Amen. 
Look at Genesis chapter 1. Are you there? I want you to look at verse 28. Now I want you to see this. Now after God created Adam and Eve and everything, this is the first thing that God did. And God what? Blessed them. Oh, God, we preach a little bit. God put his blessing on them. Yeah. God said, I want to bless you, Adam. I want to bless you, Eve. And I want to bless this creation. And I want to tell you today, in 2021, God is here to bless you. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then he said, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Yes. Yes. Oh, y'all mean to preach a little bit. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Amen, somebody. Amen. First thing God did was bless them. And then he provided for them food and clothing mm -hmm. and, and shelter. I want y'all to preach a little bit. God take care of them. Amen. Y'all want me to preach a little bit? Yeah. I know y'all want me to preach a little bit because I know Wayne said the last Sunday, and I hate to say it because my wife get on me all the time. He only blessed Adam and Eve. He didn't bless Adam and Steve. Oh, all right, now. All right, you want me to preach a little bit now? He didn't bless Eve and Sarah. He blessed Adam and Eve. He blessed male and female. He said, reproduce. There's no other thing on the earth that can reproduce but a man and a, fe and, and a female. Amen, I mean, somebody. Right. The civil union and all this mess coming up. No, they can't reproduce. No, God is not going to bless them. And I don't care what you say. I'm not again a homophobia. I'm just saying, God bless Adam and Eve. That's right. Preach, preacher. <laughs> there comes a the time when I know y'all gonna say, You're preaching hey, I'm not preaching hey. I'm preaching the Bible. There's gonna come a time y'all gonna say, You need to shut up. No. You're not tolerant. No, I'm tolerant. Yes. I'm preaching God. Oh, but not the same. Let me just say it like this. I'm the male man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm gonna tell you what God said. I'm gonna deliver the male. Yes. You don't go choke the male man, do you? <laughs> I know Jerry's here. There'll be a pit bull or a rock bottle come out here. <laughs> but I'm going to give you what thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. First thing that God did was bless. Psalm 34 <coughs> says there's no good thing will live with hell from them uh -huh. that walk uprightly. That's right. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. God bless man. God's whole purpose in life is to bless you. Are y'all hearing me today? The first thing on his mind was bless Adam. Now, this before sin got into the picture, before Adam messed up. But he blessed Adam. He said, you're the crown of my creation. I want you to be prosperous. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be blessed. Let me preach a little bit. God wants you to have a good year in 2021. God wants you to do well. He wants you to use your mind and use your talent and your gift. He wants you to love your family and love people and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. God wants the best for your life. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. How do you find favor with God and feel your burden? Point number one. Before you can do that, there's a prerefaces to God to be blessed. And it's right in our text. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Don't close your Bible now. You need to stay with me. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, here it is. Forget not thy law, but let thy heart keep my commandment. So the first thing you got to do is you got to not forget God's laws. You say, what that is? God got a sovereign law, God got a moral law, and God got practical law. God got commandments, he got statutes, and he got ordinances, he got judgment, he got precept. I know you're saying you're you getting way out there, preacher. Let me help you help me out. God's sovereign law is for all men to be saved. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish. That all come to a knowledge of salvation. But here's the problem. Everybody won't come. Jesus is appropriating everything for you to come. Mm -hmm. Everybody could be saved, but everybody won't be saved because they choose not to come. Amen, somebody. Amen. Like they say it more than they like the Lord. Amen. Let me preach a little bit. Amen. Amen. God has a sovereign week. Don't forget God's laws. God has a, here it is, a moral will. Amen. Oh, you want me to preach on that one? Let me go and preach it for you a little bit. <laughs> 
The Bible says don't be unequally yoked together. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes. We're not believing. Right. Unbelievable. Oh, let me preach on a bit. So if I'm going to say amen, and I'm looking for a wife, I need to get a saved woman That's right. like me or Jesus. Amen? Yes, amen. So, so, so I need to stay with God. So, so if I want to stay in God's moral will, then I marry a person that's a Christian. Amen. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. Well, y'all don't mean to preach a little bit. But here's the problem. Well, they're not a Christian, but they're a good person. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> They got a car. They got a house. Oh, 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 oh. oh. The Bible says mm -hmm. that what? Darkness has to do with light. All right. They, they might look good. They might even have some good moral, but when it comes to this final analysis, when you say, I want to do this for the Lord, they might be against it. Amen, somebody. Amen. God's sovereign will. Everybody say, God, moral will that I marry a Christian. By the way, let, let me just preach on this a little bit. Since everybody have a problem with this. The laws of God. God knows right from wrong. Well, what's right, preacher? Let me hear you. It's right to be honest. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's right to tell the truth. Amen. All right? Yeah. It's right to love your family. It's right to get married and do things right. Those are all right. But what's wrong, preacher? Moral or wrong? What's wrong, preacher? It's wrong to lie. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's wrong to steal. Amen. It's wrong to murder. Amen. Oh, y'all want me to say this one? Sex outside of marriage is wrong. Amen. Preacher, preacher. That's the problem with the church. Now, I know y'all said you're going to run everybody out of the church. I'm sorry. But I'm the male man. Amen. I'm sorry. You need to get married. If you're going to have sex outside of marriage, you need to get married. Not because Jesus said it. Because the Holy Spirit said it. That's right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Marriage don't work, preacher. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody get married no more. Mm -hmm. That ain't the norm. You, you, you grow up in, a, in an old, archaic society. Don't nobody, and even if old folks talk to dating each other, they can't get married because they'll lose their social security. Say, oh, let me preach a little bit. Let me preach a little bit. Someone on the line, you're going to have to trust God. If, if God can't take me on one social security, then he need to resign. But I believe that if I start dating and, and, and both of us in our 60s and we got two checks, then we're going to get one check and trust God. Let me preach a little bit. Y'all mean to preach a little bit. Y'all mean to preach a little bit. The prerequisites to God's favor is don't forget his law and commandment. And then verse 2 says, here's a good one. For length of days and long life. You want to live long? Y'all want me to preach a little bit? Amen. You live long by doing right. Yes, sir. Oh, what you saying, preacher? Y'all don't want me to preach, do you? Everybody knows that drinking causes cirrhosis of liver. Amen? Amen. Everybody know that smoking, I know you don't want me to say it. Amen. But the Surgeon Jill said it. Mm -hmm. It causes problems with your lungs. Yeah. And by the way, we already got Corona, which is eating the lungs up. And here you smoking five packs a day. Look, you're going to have more problems. Amen, somebody. Amen. You want to live long? Yes. Live right. That's right. Oh, you want me to preach a little bit? Oh, I will not say this one. I'm going to get in trouble. That's all right. The reason God kept sex in marriage is so that we don't have all these venereal diseases and all this unplanned pregnancy and all this mess out there that's killing for pregnant somebody. Amen. Let's get back to truth. You want to live long? Keep the commandment. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. He said, for length of days, and long life. God has results. I mean, he's going to give you a long life. And then he said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Put the, you know, or back in, when they were Israelite, they used to put them on their forehead. And they used to put a sign on their gate and a sign on their door. I remember when I first came to Chattanooga, I just got saved. And I put a sign on my door that said, Jesus is my best friend. And everybody would come to my house and say, What's that sign about? I said, it's about Jesus. That's what it's about. 
And then I had a job, and I was an engineer, and I had a cubicle, and I put another sign, and I know they didn't like that sign, but I put a sign on my cubicle, and it was my cubicle. I could put up a few things in my own cubicle, and it had Jesus may come back today. Amen. I came back one day, and it was gone. <laughs> They said, mm. that sign ain't going to be on this job. No, wow. Well. Let me just tell you. The Bible says, bind them about your neck. Mm. Write them on the tables of your heart. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now look at verse 4, back in the Proverbs 3. So shall thou find, what's that word? Faith. Favor. And good understanding in the sight of God and man. You want to have favor? You want to have understanding? Keep the law. Do what God tells you to do. Live right. Love everybody. I know people say you can't love everybody. No, you can't love everybody, but you can show the love of Christ. Uh -huh. There's some people that are unlovable. You know what I'm talking about, them hard-nosed folks. Got a chip on their shoulder, mad at the world, mad at everybody. I remember one time I was driving my car. My wife with me. Person got mad or something and cut the car from front of me. And I couldn't go around. And then I tried to turn and they crank it up and pulled over another lane and cut it off again. And then I tried to go over it and they pulled over to the other lane and cut the car off and got it again. I told my wife, I said, that was a fool today. You know what? I ain't finna fool with you. I'm finna turn around and go the other way. <laughs> we, I, I, I bagged my car and made it in the road. I said, hey, there's so many people out there that are spaced out, yes, on drugs, got a weapon. You know what I look like going to the car knocking on their door. Oh oh, that's the most dangerous thing in the world. So I've learned how to just love folks at a distance. I don't know how to deal with that. Amen, somebody. Amen. Good understanding. Question to you today. Why are Christians experience anxiety, panic attack? Stressed out, bankruptcy, foreclosure, repossessed, internal turmoil, ossels. Why? Because they are not trusting the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. Simple. It's a simple law. Sowing and reaping. Sow into the word. Sow into the Lord and you reap. They refuse to follow through with God's word. They refuse to obey God's word. They will not do what God tells them to. Let me help you out. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. If God tells you sow love, you're going to reap love. People say this all the time. People don't treat me nice. Well, do you treat anybody nice? Mm. Well. People don't speak to me. Do you speak to anybody? Amen. You don't love me. Well, you're you giving out love. Amen. It's a reciprocal. Amen. No, 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 nobody say nothing to you because you Got a ugly attitude. Ain't nobody saying nothing to you. Cutting. I heard a preacher say, y'all don't take this too wrong. He said, me and my wife were so in love, I could have ate them when we got married. Huh. Then he said, when we got married, I wish I had ate them. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, I don't care who you are. You have problems in this world. Let me ask you, Learn how to trust the Lord. Amen. They choose disaster. They choose to make problems instead of church. I'm going to give you two Old Testament examples of how folk did not follow the Lord. And you know the story, but I'll give it to you real quick. There was a small little city called Ai in Joshua. And Achan had went in and took a Babylon dorm. Y'all know the story. And he took some silver and the wedge of gold and hit, hit it in his ground. And so then they came to that little city of Ai. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said, well, we just tore down the walls of Jericho. We don't need that many people. We we'll just sent a few men to mm -hmm. destroy that city. And they went up. And Ai beat them down and killed 36 men. And Joshua said, well, what happened? And God said, Joshua, get up off your face. That's sin in the camp. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody? Yes, Amen. You want to know how you come you're not getting blessed? That's sin in the camp. Mm -hmm. You need to get sin out of your life. I know what you're saying. I don't know what the sin is. Well, I'll tell you what. Ask God. He'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. People say, I don't know what I did. I ask God. If you, if you seriously want to be in fellowship with God, God will reveal it to you. 
We need to hear this saying of commission and sin of omission. You know, every day I have to say, Lord, forgive me for what I did. Things that I did that I shouldn't have did and things that I, I shouldn't have. I know what you're saying. Well, preacher, you don't sin, do you? I sin every day. Amen. I don't willfully sin, but I make mistakes. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we need to learn how to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Joshua had sin in the camp. Then there's another story. And it's two chapters over in Joshua. Joshua went in and thought defeating all the enemies against God and there was a, a group of people called the Gibeonites who heard about Joshua had killed all these kings. And this is what they said. They said, you know what? We're going to put on some old clothes. <laughs> We're going to get some old bread that's molded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to get some old cheese. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to put some old socks and pots and then we're going to get some old wine bottles. And then we're going to put some old bags on our donkeys. And then we're going to walk up to Joshua. And we're going to say, oh, we're from a long, long, long country. And we heard how you killed all those kings and how you taken over that land. Say, you know, why don't you make a pact with us so we can be on your side? And you know what Joshua did? I just read it to you so you understand. Joshua 9, 14. Say, and the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel of the Lord. Why? You're not doing well because you didn't ask God. Joshua messed up when he didn't ask God before he made a decision. What you saying, bro? I'm saying whatever you're going to do, ask God first. James said it like this. You go in such a city and do something, say if the Lord will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't, don't say, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. No, say if the Lord will. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to get up and go to my job if the Lord will. You don't know what you're going to do. Matter of fact, you don't even know when you're going to wake up in the morning. Amen, somebody. Amen. So ask counsel of the Lord. Don't leave God out. That's why so many Christians cannot have favor, cannot have prosperity, cannot have God's, because they did not ask God. Y'all heard about the man, didn't you? He had this big old house. And he had this big old house, and he would say, God, what about this? I'm going to let you handle this. God, what about this? Then there was one look. Attic at the top of the house that had a door and had a lock on it. And somebody said, well, will not you go get that to God? He said, no, I ain't gonna let God know about that. I'm gonna take care of that myself. Let me tell you, you can't take care of nothing yourself. Everything that you do, you need to ask God. Amen. What you say, preacher? Let me just let me just be frank with you. I ask God everything. Mm -hmm. I ask God for this, for that. God, I need a parking space. God. Uh, I'm going in to look for something for my grandchild. God, can you make it? God, I need you to give me direction on what I need to do. God, what about school? Lord, Lord what about where I'm going to live at? Lord, what about my wife? Matter of fact, me and my wife, uh, again, y'all know, we in our senior year, we're looking at our, our will and retirement and looking at our, our grave site. And I asked God, I said, God, what you want me to do? And what you want me to do? And I told my wife this other day, I hope she don't mind me saying, I said, we need to thank the Lord because, first of all, neither one of us have counsel. Neither one of us have had major surgery. We've been in the hospital. We're still alive. We're in our section, and we're able to kind of put a wheel together and put some there and put some stuff on paper for our children, our grandchildren. So we need to ask God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I don't know whether I'm going to get up tomorrow. I don't know whether I'm going to be alive. Amen. Amen. By the way, let me just say this while I'm preaching. If the Lord call me home, yes, sir. then uh, Jerry can step up. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start putting things in order. Put that on. Because I don't know. If the Lord will, we need to do those things. Amen? Amen. We live in two different worlds, folks. We don't need to take God for granted. No, sir. No, sir. No, we sir. take God for granted. I, I, I told you I was a youth pastor for years, and I used to try to get the youth to give me testimony. They would never give me a testimony. I said, look, didn't God wake you up this morning? I said, didn't God put food on your table? Didn't God put clothes on your back? Didn't God give you a school to go to? Didn't God give you Christian parents? Let me let's not take this for granted. I think Sharon said that in our prayer. I'm glad that I'm here in the house of God. I'm glad that I was able to come. I'm glad that I'm able to read my Bible at night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, let me preach a little bit. I got aches and pains, too. Amen. I have to go to the chiropractor and have to go to physical therapy. And my wife got a thing rolling on my neck and all that. Let me tell you, we ought to thank God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Point number one. If you want to find favor and have your bones filled, that's a prerequisite to God. Favor and, and blessing in 2021. Point number two. 
If you want to find favor with the Lord, Lord bless you, Father. Mm -hmm. Key verse, verse 5 and 6. Go back to our text. Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord, verse 5. With all what? Thine heart. heart. And lean not what? Right. Unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways what? Not not and he shall what? Direct thy path. You know what you want to have favor with God? You need to trust in the God with all your heart. And when the Bible says lean out of your own understanding, stop trying to figure it out. Amen. I think I preached on you figurehead. Stop figuring out. You can't figure it out. Amen. Well, you know, you know, I got this mind. I don't care what kind of mind you got. Let the Lord work it out. Amen. I heard a preacher say the other day, he said, most of the time when they do something, it's a miracle. And they don't know, they can't give it how it happened, but they know God did it. Amen? Amen. By the way, if, if, if the Lord planned this church and built this church, it wasn't John Jesus. It was the miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. He built the church. Amen? Amen. This is his church. And he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Amen, somebody? Amen. Trust in the Lord. Adam and Eve, he blessed them. Yes, Amen. Why should you trust the Lord? Let me help you out. Because he first loved me. First yes, John 4, 9 say, we love him because he first loved me. The first thing he did to Adam and Eve was what? Bless them. God loves you. Jesus said in John 13, 1, that he loved his own even to the end. Trust simply means to put your faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord. No, I can't figure it out, but God will work it out. Hebrews 11, 1 say, faith in the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Put your faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me help you out. Simple, simple illustration. Mm -hmm. When you came to church today, you trusted in this pew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You trusted this pew would hold your weight. Amen? Amen. I didn't see nobody come in and, what they say, get a weight and check it out. <laughs> weight bearer. <laughs> weight bearer. <laughs> you just sat down and you trusted this pew. And you got in your car this morning. Yes, sir. I know some of you got those die hard batteries. But when you stuck that key in there, you trusted that that car was going to crank up, right? Amen. Now, that sometimes it didn't crank up. But anyway, but you trust, and you just, <laughs> trust, you can trust me. And then when you drive your car, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and somebody pull out in front of you, and you hit them brakes, like y'all with me today? And they, mm -hmm. you trusted that they were. I don't know about Jerry. He's been having to get brake pads and all that. <laughs> 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 right, I, 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 I told Jerry, oh, 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 we had another brother who said, man, it's the devil. He done, I said, what? The devil, like, you need to get some new tires and some new rollers. It ain't the devil's fault. You can't break them the last five years. I don't care who you are. Oh, it's the devil. It ain't the devil. It's you need to use some common sense. You need brake pads. Your brake car. Something wrong. Maybe it's somebody. But you trust in brakes. And you get on the airplane. You trust the pilot. I ain't never seen nobody going and say, hey, let me see your credentials. Do you, do, have you been to pilot school? <laughs> when you go to the doctor, you trust the doctor. When you go to the lawyer, let me picture a little bit. You trust that lawyer been to school, right? You trust they know what they're doing. Put the same trust in the boy. Are y'all listening to me? Trust God in everything that you do. Mm. What I can't understand is, I can't understand it. We can trust God to get us to heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we can't trust God for the next trial. Lord. Amen. Lord, what am I do? I ain't got no money. What you did before. Trust God. Mm. Lord, what am I do? The doctor said I got a bad, you know, get pathology. Trust the Lord. Mm. Trust the Lord. I remember mean, one time, and this ain't even my message. I got an abscess. Y'all know the abscess. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My whole head was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the dentist. I said, what in the world? He said, it's an abscess. Mm -hmm. And he said, and then he gave me all the medication that he got, and I still was hurting. <laughs> and he said, Mother Nature will bring it down. Mm -hmm. You can't take no more medicine. Mm -hmm. And eventually, after a period of time, it went back. So I had to trust that the dentist knew what he was doing. I had to trust. I had to go and, and hear him do a root canal. Oh, y'all want me to preach a little bit? Uh -huh. Yeah, I had to trust that he knew what he did. 
But I'm going to tell you that my root canal is gone, my abscess is gone, and I'm talking and preaching just like that never happened. Amen, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Let me give you an Old Testament example that's in the reverse. It's the story of Balaam. That was the king of ba ba Balaam, the king of the Moab, Moabites that wanted Balaam to curse Israel. He wanted, he, he was going to hire him to curse his people. He said, I heard how they're coming in and they're taking over the land. And so I, I heard that you could curse them. So he brought, matter of fact, let me just do this story real quick. God told Balak not to go. But just like we, just like me and you, they're going to give me some money. So he said, he sent some people and God said, don't go. And then they finally sent some more noble people and some money. So Balak got on his donkey. Y'all know the story. I have to preach this since I got some young, young folks here. And he riding his donkey to go to curse Israel. But the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing there. Y'all with me? The angel of the Lord had a sword in his hand. And so as Balak was riding the donkey, the donkey turned to the side. And Balak went out in the field. And he got upset. He kicked the donkey. He said, what are you doing? I'm supposed to be going to curse God's people. So he brought the donkey back in. And the donkey started going again. And then at that time, the sword was out. He's going to kill. And the donkey turned to the side and smashed Bala's feet against the wall. Y'all know the story. And Bala got so hot, he said, If I had a sword in my hand, I'd have killed you, donkey. I want y'all to hear me. God opened up the donkey mouth. Or what you said, God can do what he wants to. Now, this had to be kind of strange. But the donkey said to, to Balaam, had I not been your donkey for these years? Had I been faithful all these years? Had you trusted me to do everything? The only reason I turned to save your life. And when he said that, he looked and saw the angel of the Lord with a sword. And he would have killed Balaam if that donkey had kept going. Amen, somebody. Amen. But here's the story. He took Balaam up on a mountain. He said, curse Israel. And he cursed him, and every time he tried to curse him, the Bible said in Numbers 23, 8, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Thou hast blessed them all together. So he blessed them instead. Then he took him again on the on second time on the mountain. And Balaam tried to curse Israel. He said, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he is blessed, and I cannot re reverse it. Then he took him the third time up on the mountain to curse Israel. And Balaam tried to curse him. And then he said in Numbers 24, 13, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord, but what the Lord says he will do. Let me bring that home to you. People that are out to get you, they can't curse you because God is over them. God will take that cursing and turn it into a blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. So don't, don't get perturbed when you get the naysayers and you get the negative people around you. I told you last time I preached on get rid of them negative naysayer folks around you. So when you got somebody around you that's always down and you're always talking about, you know, you ain't going to be nothing and you ain't going to do nothing and this ain't going to work. You just turn to the side and say, you know what? God is going to work it out. And God, matter of fact, Psalm 23 says like this. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then they say, he'll prepare a table before me. What? In the presence of my enemies. You know, I'm not saying you need to go back and boast to your enemy, but when they say you can't do it, you need to go on and stand up there on it and just show them, look what God can do. Amen, somebody. Amen. My last point. If you want to have favor with God and feel your bonds in 2021, number one, the prerequisite is you need to keep his commandments. Obey, trust, and honor God. Number two is you need to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. And then the last one is stop depending on your own investments to be successful. You know, that's people say, you know, I got CDs and I got portfolios and I got fidelities and I got 401ks and I got money in the bank and I got stock market. Let me tell you, don't depend on that. That can belly up in a minute. Amen? Amen. Depend on the Lord. Jesus said it like this in John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you can ask whatever you will and it shall be done. Amen? Amen. He said, without me, you can't do nothing. 
So let me tell you, depend on the Lord for everything in your life. Everything that I have came from the hand of God. I didn't do nothing on myself. Everything that I had, God allowed me to do it through his sovereign grace and his sovereign will. Let me somebody. I am his delight. I'm his workmanship. The Bible says I'm created unto good works, unto workmanship. I'm his crown of creation. Just like Adam and Eve. God created man as his crown. I'm the apple of his eye. God wants to bless me. God said, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. And the Bible said, any man that laid down his life for his friend is a friend that's taken closer than a brother. I got a friend in Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I turn back to Proverbs chapter 3. I want to give you this last verse. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. says, Honor the Lord yes, yes. with thy substance yes, sir. and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Yes, sir. So shall thy bones be what? Filled Feel with plenty. Mm -hmm. And thy precious shall burst out with new wine. Yeah. Let, let me preach a little bit to you. Give God the first. Everything that you have belongs to God. Amen. I give you an example. Me and my wife, we bring our money in together. And we pay our bills. And then we give to the church. And then... All that money that we came in, given to us, came from the Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I want y'all to listen to me. It comes from the Lord. And so I'm actually giving back what he gave me. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, maybe I'm not giving. Mm -hmm. Just say, for instance, I gave my wife a hundred dollars. And then I went back to her and said, uh, I need 20 and she said, this is my money. Well, hold on a minute. I was the one that gave it to you, right? I was the one that gave you the $100. So you're going to get upset because I want 20 <laughs> So that's what we do, God. God give us all the money. He give us all our help. He give us all our supplies. He give us all our fruit. Now, he said, could you give me a little bit back? Mm -hmm. This is my money. No, it ain't your money. It belongs to God. That's right. So give to God first. Yes, and God will bless you. I remember when I first got saved, I started giving to God. I started giving to my grandmama and my mother. And I was an engineer, so I was making a little bit more than my family was. And I said, God, I said, God, I'm going to give back. And so I began to send money home to my mama and my grandmama. And I said, Lord, thank you. And the more I sent, the more he gave. And the more I gave, the more he Let me tell you, you can't out give God. And I would try to give, and God would give me more. And you say, preacher, preacher. Okay. There was time when I would say, where the money gonna come from? And then I would get a check in the mail where the mortgage company would say you overpaid your mortgage. And then when they would send me a check back and say, This is what back you. And I said, Thank you, Lord, I needed that. And then there was other time when I would have bills to come in, and then somebody out of nowhere would send me a check. They all mean preacher like me. God would take care of me. God would pay for me. God would take care of me. I mean, I had just bought them. And again, I'm not in the cars. And like, I know Jerry's in the car. Jerry, I don't know. <laughs> and I had got a BMW. And I had got a BMW. And the tires on the thing was expensive. And I said, Lord, I can't buy no four her all the time. And I went to the top place. And I went to the top place. And he said, uh, this person just bought brand new tires. But they, they still got plenty of thread on their tires. He said, I got four brand new tires. BMW tire that'll fit your car. I said, how much? He said, oh, I give them all to you for $100. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By the way, those sales that you began at the store, you didn't have nothing to do with it. God knew that you didn't have the money. So when you went down there, they had a 50% off. Uh, now, let me preach a little bit. There have been times when the sale hadn't started. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I went down there to the store. And I said, uh, anything on sale? They said, no, oh, the sale don't start the Monday. I said, but today Friday. They mm -hmm. said, we're going to start And then all of a sudden they said, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, y'all been preaching. Y'all been preaching. Uh, 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 I'm just there, just, just barely out enough to make it. And they said, but you know, it ain't going to hurt anything. I'm going to go ahead and institute. You will be the first person to get the sale for 50% off on Friday, but it's going to sell Monday. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God work it out for me. Amen, somebody. Amen. I told you about the time that the, the, the oh. Preacher was on the airplane. I told you about the time he was on the airplane. And they got in the turbulence. I don't know if you ever flew a lot. And you got in the turbulence. And he said, and the pilot came out and said, everybody need to 
squat down and, and get your oxygen mask. He said everybody was so frightened. Mm -hmm. And he said he got up and said, let's pray. Amen. He said, pray. He said, let's pray. He said, Lord, I know you're in control of this planet. He said, Lord, I don't know how many patents, well, 150 patents on here, but we're going to trust that you're going to level it out. And he said, when he got through praying, the plane leveled out. Y'all listen to me. He said, and as the plane leveled out, the hostesses came back and said, everybody can sit back up. And all the stuff went back up into the compartment. He said, and then the plane landed in Atlanta Apple. He said, then they got ready to get out the plane. He said, hold on a minute. I need to go and talk to everybody. He went to the front in the first place. He said, now, y'all heard me pray, but nobody has thanked the Lord. He said, now, y'all didn't just make it safe because y'all got it on your own. He said, now, if you thought you did, I want you to say, not only did we pray, we're going to thank the Lord for anyone to get off this plane. And he said, I didn't need everybody to bow your heads. And he had the whole plane. Now, y'all listen to me. The power. The, the, the airline through it. He said, thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through the turbulence. Thank you, Lord. He said, a lot of people don't want to give you thanks. But I know, without a shadow of doubt, the reason that we're landing safely because of the grace of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. You got to learn how to thank the Lord. You got to learn how to give back to the Lord. You got to learn how to honor him. He said, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So shall not just your tithe, but your talent. And not just your talent, but your time. Give God your bless. I don't know about you, but you know my wife and I. Thank you, Bill wife. <laughs> <laughs> she don't like leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know how, how we get through have that big Thanksgiving dinner. Y'all win this dinner. And we done made all the turkey. And she done broke down the turkey, made some turkey salad. Oh, we yeah. broke down the turkey. And then made them potato salad. And then she said, I. What are we going to do? I said, we're going to keep eating. We're going to rest for another two weeks. <laughs> because God blessed us with the food. Amen. We're going to eat. Yeah. Every now and then I go back and I say, what happened to my meat? <laughs> that meat was two days old. I told it. I said, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that no more. I eat the bologna. I eat the tuna. I eat it. Let me tell you, God bless. Yes, sir. God, that we need to thank God. My barns are filled. My refrigerator is filled. God is blessing me. I don't got time to preach on the toilet paper. Y'all don't preach on the toilet paper. Toilet <laughs> paper flowing out. My wife went to the store and bought all kind of Lysol and Lysol helper. And <laughs> what we do with all this stuff? But God bless. Amen. By the way, I got the call. By the way, I. I, I did what in my mind. God just gave me. I got the call just this yesterday. The guy down there off the grill. You remember when we did the evangelist off the grill? Yes, yes, yes. Call me. He said, Pastor Jim, I got some good news. I said, what's the good news? Is? He said, there's a man who's got a whole bunch of food that he want to give away. And he don't have nobody to give it to. And so it came to my mind that you was a pastor and that you could help to distribute the food. He said he had so many donations, had so many people that could gave to him, he needed to give out. He said, would you give him a call and give out the food? I said, that's another blessing from God. Amen. Well, let, let me not stop there, but I said, but first of all, let's talk about you. I said, now, the last time I talked to you, you were going to Vanderbilt for leukemia. I said, and I want you to know, I've been praying for you. I just want to know, how are you doing with your leukemia and your cancer and your business. And here's the good news. He said, I want you to know that I changed my medicine. He said, but I'm doing fine. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. He said, the business is doing fine. I want to fall on my knees right there and say, thank you, Lord. So what I'm saying is that God will bless you. By the way, since I throw that out there, if you know any families that need food, we got a whole food pantry that we need to give away. I thought about the Bethlehem Center because I know Reggie down there. I thought about uh, uh, Inner City Ministry because I know uh, Paul down there. I thought about all the other places. But then I said, let me bring it to the church. And let me let them help us decide to give up. God will blow your barns full. Amen? Amen. As, I, as I close, there is a parable that Jesus gave. God just gave it to me. About the 
rich man who barns got over full. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the rich man wasn't man. like us. He wasn't benevolent. He said, all my crops are all full. Bountiful. He said, what am I going to do? I got all this fruit and all these vegetables and I ain't got nowhere to put them. And then he said, here it is, this self-gratification. I'll build a bigger barn. Mm. And I'll do what? I'll store all my goods that I have. Now, the Bible don't normally use the word food, but the Bible uses the word food. Mm. The Bible said, Jesus said, thou food. Mm. Tonight, your life shall be required. And then who shall these things be? Amen, somebody. Mm. Let me tell you, when God bless you, give it away. Mm -hmm. Let me preach a little bit. The more you give, the more he give back to you. Amen. God bless you with more, you give it away. You give it away. Uh, I thank the Lord, for Sister Sharon and some of those who have been giving out for Thanksgiving. I thank the Lord that this church has been giving out. We gave out some chili dental. I thank the Lord for uh, the law firm that donated. And we've been giving out some food for hamburgers. And I want to keep giving. And again, and me and Jerry went around the neighborhood and invited folks to come. Because as God bless our barn, we want to bless somebody else. And as God bless this church, we want to bless somebody else. Now, I don't know what God going to do with this church. And it's not my church. But if God bring in the church, it's because people don't know the Lord. They need Jesus. Jesus. And what we're going to do, we're going to continue to bless the Lord because the Bible said, bless the Lord and all my soul. Bless his holy name for he's worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 You want favor this year. Don't neglect the Lord's commandment. You want favor this year. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. And want favor this year. Give the Lord of the first of your blessing. Amen. Amen. As I close, I always like to give a Invitation for those of you that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sin. There have been a lot of folks going to church, but they don't know the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So it's a simple prayer. Again, the prayer don't say the prayer don't save you, but it's the condition of your heart. But it goes something like this. You can bow your head and say, Dear Jesus, Lord, I understand what the pastor is talking about. I understand what he's saying, that I need a personal relationship with you. Lord, I want to have this success. I want to have favor. I want to have my barns filled. So, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you forgive me of my sins, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, that you would come into my heart and save me, Lord. I believe that Jesus died. I believe that he's buried. I believe that he rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, to stay. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to tell you about the authority of the word of God. God has saved you. Because I want to encourage you to don't just stop there. Get into a Bible-believing church. I want to encourage you to start living right. Start letting the Lord bless you. The Lord is going to bless those that trust him, those that are obedient, those that are following his word. So do those things that bring honor and glory to the Lord. So until next week, and again, we're going to still be on this topic on blessing in 2021 because I want to drive it home that God will bless you because God, the first thing he did for Adam and Eve was bless them. So until next week, keep your... Look up for your gift and draws now. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.